Hello there, I'm Tayu and I attend East Surrey College. I aspire to be a film director and this is why I feel so passionate about black film directors and actors and as a young black man in myself, this is what I look up to in the culture that I grew up on. I'm here to talk about the black actors and directors that I look up to that and that inspire me. I also have filmed an exclusive interview with a theatre actor that has been on tours around the UK and has acted with films in films before, therefore works with big names that you'll later find out when you watch the interview. With all this being said, at the end of the documentary, I hope that you have built a knowledge in this industry and also the culture and how these two worlds have mixed together. The first actor that I'll be speaking about today is an actor called Michael B. Jordan. Michael is an American actor and producer. He was born on the 9th of February 1987 in Santa Ana, California, USA, to Donna and Michael A. Jordan. Michael also has a sister named Jamelia and a brother named Khaled. Michael's early days of acting started at New York Arts High School. Michael is known for his early role acting in The Wire. He also acted in TV shows called Raising Dion, which was released in 2019 and is still ongoing. Michael's role was a character named Mark Warren. Another television show that you probably recognize Michael from was The Wire. This was released in 2002 and finished in 2008. Michael acted a character called Wallace. Friday Night Lights was a TV show that was released in 2006 and ended in 2011. The role that Michael played was a character called Vince Howard. One of the big blockbusters that Michael first appeared on was Creed. This film was released in 2015. Michael played the protagonist called Adonis Johnson, son of boxing champion Apollo Creed. Michael then appeared on a part two of the film called Creed II. This film came three years after the first film in 2018. One film that's more on the famous side was the film Black Panther. This film was released in 2018. Michael played the villain in this film and the character Eric Killmonger. Killmonger was related to the royal family and thought he was the rightful heir to the throne. He also played a vital role in the film Fantastic Four. This film was released in 2015. Michael played the character The Human Torch, which was one of the heroes a part of the superhero group. Michael also has some unreleased films that are coming out in the next two years. In 2022, the part two of Black Panther will be released. The audience are yet to know what role he is playing in the film, but we are certain that it is coming out. Another unreleased film that will be coming out this year is Tom Clancy's Without Remorse. In this film, Michael plays the protagonist. His character is an ex-Marine Navy SEAL and is on a mission to catch the people that murdered his wife and his Digimon Gaston Honsu. Digimon is an actor and a model. Digimon was born in a place called Continuo Benin, 1964. Digimon started his acting life showing up in music videos. He started his first visit into the film world with a film called Amistad, playing the character Kanique in the film directed by Steven Spielberg. One of the first television shows that he appeared on was The Black Panther, the animation. He played the voiceover of the Black Panther. This was released in 2010 and ended in 2010. And there's not really much you can say about this because the series wasn't airing for long. Another TV show that Digimon appeared in was Wayward Pines. This TV show was made in 2015 and finished in 2016. Digimon's role in this TV show was a character called CJ Mitchum. Moving on to films now, one famous film that Digimon appeared in was Guardians of the Galaxy. This film was made in 2014. Digimon played a character called Korath the Punisher. He also played the same character in Captain Marvel. Another film that he appeared on was Shazam, which was released in 2019. He played the character the wizard that shows the protagonist the path to be a superhero. Digimon plays the role as Korath the Punisher in the film called Captain Marvel. We also see um, Digimon play this role in the film Guardians of the Galaxy, which we have spoken about earlier in the in the documentary. This film was released in 2019. Last but not least, Digimon has acted in the film Fast and Furious. Digimon played the role as Jacade, the villain in, in the film. 
Whoopi Goldberg. Karen Elaine Johnson, also known as Whoopi Goldberg, is an American actor, author, comedian, and television personality. She was born on November the 3rd, 1955 in Chelsea, New York, USA. Whoopi is one of the only 16 entertainers to win a Grammy Award, Emmy Award, Academy Award, and a Tony Award. TV shows that Whoopi are also known for are The Stand. The Stand was released in 2020 and lasted until 2021. The character that she played was Auntie Abigail. Another TV show that some people in the older generation might have seen Whoopi in was Star Trek The Next Generation. This show was first released in 1987 and lasted seven years and finished in 1994. Now moving on to films, Whoopi played the main role in the film Sister Act. She acted as a nun. This film came out in 1992. She plays the role of a singer having to go into witness protection because she witnessed a murder. Another film that she appeared in was an animation film called The Lion King. Whoopi was the voiceover for the character Shenzi. An animation that Whoopi played a role in was Toy Story 3. She voiced and acted a character called Stretch. John Boyega, a British and Nigerian actor, producer, was born on the 17th of March in Peckham, London. John is a vital role for black actors in the UK due to him being one of the most recognised actors to come out of the UK. This is from the role that he's been playing from Star from the Star Wars saga. His first appearance from Star Wars was Star Wars The Force Awakens. This film was released in 2015 and John plays a vital role in the film with the character named Finn. But before this, he had done some previous films, one being called Attack the Block. This film was released in 2011. John's role in this film was a character called Moses. This film was about aliens attacking a group of youths housing blocks and then trying their best to keep them out. He then moved on to playing a role in the film Detroit. He played the character Dismutes. This film was released in 2017. He then played a very important role in a group of films directed by Steve McQueen. John Boyega played the character Leroy Logan. The group film called Small Act consists of five episodes. Mangrove, Lovers Rock, Red, White and Blue, Alex Weetle and Education. Another film that John Boyega played a role in was Pacific Rim Uprising. This film was released in 2018. He played the character called Jake Pentecost. Daniel Coolio is a British actor. He was born on the 24th of February 1989. Kuja started his acting career as a teen in improvisational theatre. Due to his work in the theatre, he was able to get a role on a British television show called Skins, which he was able to co-write some of the episodes. He also played a role on in the series Black Mirror. This lasted from... 2011 till 2019 Daniel's role in the series was Bing a character called another TV show that Daniel appeared in was Psychoville this was released in 2009 and finished in 2011 his role in this show was a uh, Michael Fry TV one film that Daniel played a massive role in was a film called Get Out this film was released in 2017 Daniel played the protagonist in the film. His character was named Chris Washington. He was kept captive by white people and tries to make his way out of a house. Then played a role in the film Black Panther, which was released in 2018. His role in this film was a character called Hiwabe. He then moved on to be in the film Queen and Slim. This was released in 2019. He played the role of Slim, one of the main protagonists along with Queen. He then went to be in a film called Judas and the Black Messiah. This film was released in 2021. He played the role of Fred. Ha now moving on to Spike Lee. Shelton Jackson Spike Lee is an American film director, producer, actor and screenwriter and a professor also. He was born on the 20th of March 1957 in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. Spike owns his own production company called 40 Acres and a Mule Filmworks. 
Since 1983, there has been 35 films that have been produced by Spike Lee himself. He makes his, he made his break directing the film She Got to Have It. Spike Lee directed the film called Malcolm X. This film was released in 1992 starring Denzel Washington. He then went on to direct a film called Black Klansman. This film was released in 2018. The Five Bloods was another film not only directed but also produced. This film was released in 2020 starring Chadwick Boseman. This film has been on one of the most recent films yet to come out by Spike Lee himself. Another film that Spike Lee took part in making was a film called Inside Man. This film was released in 2006. Last but not least, Spike Lee directed the film called Old Boy. This was released in 2013. As a mentor and a professor in the film industry, Spike Lee is seen as a wise person. Here's a few quotes that may have that have been made by Spike Lee himself. It has been my observation that parents kill more dreams than anybody. I'd like to state that Spike Lee is not saying that African American culture is not just for black people alone to enjoy and cherish culture is for everybody. We grow up in a very creative environment and we are exposed to the arts at a very young age. So it's not surprising that all of us are in some way form of art. Tyler Perry is an American director, actor, producer, and a screenwriter. He was born in 1969 in New Orleans, Louisiana, USA. In 2011, Tyler was named the highest paid man in entertainment due to him earning a whopping $130 million between May 2010 and May 2011. Tyler created a character called Medea, a hard, tough old lady. Using the same character, Medea, he uses the character for most of his films, such as in the movie, Medea Gets a Job. This film was released in 2012. Another film that Tyler acted and directed was Diary of a Mad Black Woman. This was released in 2001. Medea's Christmas, this film was released in 2011 and directed by Tyler himself, but also played one of the main protagonists. Sir Stephen Rodney McQueen is a video artist and a filmmaker. Steve is known for his award-winning film, 12 Years a Slave. He was born in 1969, London. The most famous films that Steve has directed was 12 Years a Slave, which was released in 2013. This film got, rec got him recognition due to it being based on a true story and touched people's hearts all over around the world. Denzel Hayes Washington Jr. is an American actor, producer, and director. He was born in 1954, Mount Vernon, New York, USA. He was, he's been described as an actor who's changed the concept of classic movie stardom, being aligned with characters that are normally seen as a hero or the favorite to the audience. Denzel has acted in a summer films such as The Equalizer. The Equalizer was released in 2014. Denzel played the lead role as the character Robot McCool, who is out on a violent spree. He then appeared in the sequel to The Equalizer 2. This film was released in 2018, four years after the... F Another film that he appeared in was a film named Man on Fire. This film was released in 2004. Denzel played the role of Creasy. Later on, his in his career, he played the role of Robert Bobby Trench in the film Two Guns, released in 2013. He then moved on to play the role as Whip in the film Flight, which was released in 2012, playing the lead role. American Gangster is another film that Denzel appeared in. This film was released in 2007. He played the character Frank Lucas. Denzel also has a few inspiring quotes for people that look up to him. One quote would be, I say luck is when an opportunity comes along and you're prepared for it. Another quote is, if I'm a cup maker, I'm interested in making the best cup I possibly can. My effort goes into the cup, not what people...
Felix Gary Gary. Felix is an American director, actor, music video director and a film producer. He was born in 1969 which makes him the age of 51 years old in New York, United States. Felix began his career directing award winning music videos and moved on to the film world. One film that Felix directed was called Straight Outta Compton. This film was released in 2015. Fast and Furious 8 is another film that he directed in 2017. He then went on to direct a film called Men in Black International, which was released in 2019. And last but not least, the film called Friday, which was released in 1995, which is personally my f- I have filmed an exclusive interview with an actor that I have booked. Th- this interview, I will be asking a sum of questions that, I have that has to do with this project. The reason I chose this actor is because I see him as a mentor and as the rest of the people that I've spoken about in this documentary, I look up to him and he inspired me to, to do film. I want to thank you for watching this video and I hope that you have boosted your knowledge in this subject and I hope that you have broadened your horizons about film. My name is Tyrese and this has been the black actors and directors that I, I look up to. Could you please tell the audience your name and what you do? My name is Stephen McCauley. I'm a writer, director and an actor. Okay. At what age did you realise that you wanted to pursue film and the media industry? Um, I think I was a bit of an actor anyway when I was a kid. I was always performing in some sort of way. Yeah. So there was always something going on and um, I don't know, I think it's a natural transformation. Well, in saying that, I think probably in my mid-twenties. Okay. Because originally I wanted to be a football player. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't happen. Who or what inspired you to start acting and directing? A guy called um, Riggs O'Hara. Riggs O'Hara? Yeah, he was my first director. Yeah. Um, he was in the original cast of West Side Story. Okay. And um, he was American, obviously. He came over to England. And he started a theatre company called Post Office Theatre. Mm-hmm. And um, I started working from... Like, this was in Notting Hill. And I started working with him there. Okay, that's good. Um, how was your experience when you first started acting in the industry? Well, the first experience was weird because um, someone said to me, like, the director asked me to come to the theatre. Yeah. I, I got to the theatre. And one of the actors, they, they already had a play that was, um, that was uh, rehearsing. And um, one of the actors was late. Yeah. And so um, obviously I got introduced as uh, some of the like, guy who wanted to do acting and and so Rick said, okay, give him a script, let him read in for, um, for, for Leo. So I was like, okay. So I started reading and um, he really liked it. And uh, then the guy turned up, I'm, I mean, I'm rehearsing for about an hour mm. and the, the director's giving me good notes and compliments and saying, that's great, I really like it, I really like it, I like what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> Um, then the actor turned up and they're having a conversation and, and anyway he sat the actor and gave me the part. Wow. And give the actor his due, the guy came to see it three times. So um, yeah, that's how uh, I kind of broke into that world. Okay. What would you say would be your most prized work that you've completed? My prized work? Probably one by one, film one by one with uh, Rick Mail. Mm-hmm. We've done a film um, where I played Proof, who was, um, uh, Rick Mel's quite a famous actor. Mm-hmm. Um, back in the day, he's not your age group, but he's a comedy actor. Mm-hmm. Um, he's in uh, The Young Ones, and he played Bottom, and different characters, and he's a really funny guy. And mm-hmm. um, So I worked with him. What was the movie about? The movie was a bit, it's a bit conspiracy. It was about a new world order, how they was going to um, reduce the population, and um, it's, kind of, it's been it's a bit of a... It's become a kind of a cult film now since coronavirus came out. Yeah. And um, people are re- watching it and going, oh my God, they, this was, they said this was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> like all these big conspiracy, conspiracy theories and all that stuff. But yeah, it's, it's good. Okay. Uh, one of my five. But also, i say um, directing um, a play called um, The Playground, written by Darren Raymond, too, which was a fantastic piece of theatre which I helped um, direct with his company mm-hmm. and then I done then I did um, 
I put it on in uh, Southfield Park Theatre, which was a, it was a fantastic production, a really enjoyable piece of work to do. Oh, okay, sounds good. Might have to watch that when we're done. Have you ever been on tour? Um, if you have, what tours have you been on? Um, yeah, I've done a tour. I've done a national tour of the country with um, a guy called John Z D, who's the um, the, the, di the artistic director of Sadler's Wells, and he does um, breaking conventions, which is um, a hip hop dance um, theatre company. Yeah. And he tours everywhere with it. And anyway, he put on a play called Marcus the Sadist. Yeah. That was. Um, Lead role was um, Bashi. You heard of Bashi, the the, um, the rapper Bashi. I've heard of him, but I haven't listened to his music. Yeah, yeah, he was in the lead role, and um, he's in Top Boy. He's been in a few kind of things that maybe you'll watch now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we toured the country with that production. Okay. How long was the tour? I don't know. That must have been about two two months, two or three months. Do you enjoy it? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. I was single at the time, so it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any people that you've collaborated with, like famous people? Rick Mayo. Yeah. Um, Chucky Venn, Clint Dyer. Um, to name a few. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. If you had to pick someone to collaborate with, who would you pick, like, for a future project? Well, are you saying someone that? In, in in what way do you mean? Is it is it is it a fantasy one or someone that's realistic? Um, fantasy and realistic. You can give me two. Fantasy would probably be like to collaborate with someone like um, oh, let me think. It's a few people. Um, I've forgotten. I'd probably like to collaborate with. Denzel Washington. Yeah. Nah, because he, he's probably one of my favourite actors. Mm. I hope that's not one of your questions, but yeah. No. He's one of my favourite actors and I'd probably like to collaborate with him, even if it's just like acting in a production with him. Mm. You know, that's something that I'd like to do. Um, realistically, I'd like to collaborate with Clint Dyer, because um, I think he's a fantastic director. Um, work with Roy Williams, people like Roy Williams, um, Courtier Newland, um, I've collaborated with um, anyway. But I'd like to work with them kind of people. I think oh. they're fantastic. Okay, sounds good. What are your next steps? Any projects coming up? Um, we're doing a, um, a writer's fest at Chelsea Theatre, which is um, six plays in one night, and each play is for 15 minutes. And so um, that's the next um, production that we're putting on. Okay. Um, what would you say would be your top five films to watch? Top five? Yeah. Uh, um, I don't know. There's so many films that I've watched in my life that... I don't know. That's, I, they can't, films kind of get old. Yeah. And right. you've watched Give them so many times. Give me the recent ones, the recent ones then. Recent films that I yeah, like. Yeah, the recent films that you like. Um, I like When They when they See Us. When They See Us. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen that? No. I, th I thought that was a really good film because it um, it showed how um, this, those guys that have got, um, in America, they got arrested for a rape, a murder that they didn't commit, and they all ended up getting going to jail. And then eventually they, they um, what like a group of black boys? Yeah, yeah, I've watched that one actually. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. watched that one. I thought that was um, I kind of it was really mean. It was, it was so real, and so, mm -hmm. it was a true story as well. So I think a lot of true stories I enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, films top five, I don't know. Um, uh, I probably liked. Um, I can't even think. Um, Once upon a time in America. I thought that was a good film. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Scarface. That was a that was a great film. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, that's a top first three. Yeah, yeah, that's good enough. Um, last but not least, if you could have dinner with one person in the industry, dead or alive, who would you choose? Dead or alive. Dead or alive. Um, have dinner 
Like dinner as in like... It's weird, I never really think of that sort of thing. Well, I'd love to have dinner with this person. If you could sit down and chop it up with one person in the um, industry, who would you choose? In the industry as in... Media. As film. in media, could that, could that be... Um, Music, film, whatever. Singer? Yeah, sing, sing. Okay. You know. Rappers, singers, actors, directors. Um... I'd like to sit down and have a chat with Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder? Mm. Why is that? Because this how he's been so inspiring, like, and, mm. you know, obviously he's someone who's blind as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And now he's, he's just had a fantastic career. He's, he must have a lot to say, do you mm. know what I mean, about yeah. business. And yeah. says, I just think he's a great, great person. He's one of my favourite artists as well, so I'd like to sit down with Stevie Wonder. Okay. It's interesting, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, he has actually had one had a su su successful career because I, even I've heard of him and he's not really in my generation mm. so yeah but um, I want to thank you for coming and agreeing to do the um, interview with me it re I really appreciate it you're welcome thank you thank you it's been my pleasure yeah